Iran is a country with a powerful history and a glorious past. And I'm continuing my journey of discovery to the center of the country to see a city known as half the world. and I'm traveling from the north of Iran through the historic center of the country to the Persian Gulf in the south to bring you flavors of the people, the culture, and the food of Iran. I have journeyed from my home province of Gilan in the north on the border of the Caspian Sea, and now I'm cutting through the desert towards Esfahan, a magical place which has been for centuries a precious jewel in the crown of Persia. I haven't been back to Isfahan for over 30 years, so this is an exciting trip for me. Iranians describe Isfahan as Nesf Jahan, or Isfahan half of the world, because they are so proud of this city, they say if you see Isfahan, you have seen half of the world. This square in the middle of the city is one of the world's biggest and it is flanked by some of the most impressive feats of Islamic architecture that would define Isfahan as one of the most important Islamic cities in the world. The Persian state has always had three interconnected components. The symbols of those components are quite visible in this square. The royal palace represented the power of the government and the mosque over there represented the power of Islam and down here, the bazaar represented the power of the economy and the merchants. Isfahan became the new capital of the Persian Empire back in the late 16th century. Shah Abbas the Great had defeated the Uzbeks and later he ousted the Ottoman Turks, who had occupied parts of Persia. With the country once more under Persian control, he decided Isfahan was to be the capital of his new empire. His plan for Isfahan was grand and it was ambitious. He commissioned majestic buildings to make the city the kind of capital that would be awe-inspiring. This is one of the largest bazaars in Iran. Most of it was built in the 16th century, but parts of it are more than a thousand years old. Persia prospered under Shah Abbas. He encouraged the production of silks, carpets, and ceramics, which were sold abroad, particularly in Europe. The market nowadays sells just about anything, including what looks like diet spices. اما نمی‌دونیم که صبح خاصیت زیاد کلستری هم داره این روی هم توی کی جنرال شده. آقا واقعا درسته که صبح خاصیت زیاد کلستری داره. آره زیاد کلستری بخوریم حالا شما. یعنی همین رو بخورم کلستری میاد پایین. همین الان ببینم. دو کپ آقا می‌ریزم. خیلی خوشمزه. اصلا گفتم من به ذکر قادر قدوس علی هم او یه رحمت this is a dervish singing. This is what usually dervishes do. They sing in Iranian bazaars. This particular dervish is now singing in praise of Imam Ali, the first Shiite Imam. The bazaar is one of the centerpieces of Isfahani grandeur. When foreign dignitaries came to Persia in the 17th century to visit Shah Abbas the Great, he would bring them first into this bazaar, which at that time was really magnificent. But Shah Abbas was clever, and he would bring his guests here near this gate and would ask his servants to open it. And the guests would suddenly face this huge square. This 
Madison Square is so big that in the 17th century they used to play polo here. These two posts which I'm walking across used to be goal for the polo. And Shah Abbas the Great used to watch the polo game from his royal palace over there. This was one of the biggest royal courts in the world in the 17th century. Shah Abbas the Great and the other Safavid kings used to invite their foreign guests to this palace for entertainment. They used to hold the annual Nowruz or New Year ceremony in this huge square. Thousands of people from Isfahan and other parts of the province would come here for a big party. These frescoes painted on the walls of the palaces in Isfahan would show the rich and sumptuous lifestyle of the Persian royal court. It was a heady time, a golden era for art and music. I'm at the top of the Ali Ghafu Palace. This used to be the old music room. The king would come here to listen to music. This room was designed in a way to give it a good acoustics and the special shapes in this room would help for that purpose. The 3D effect of the walls and ceiling would enhance the music, making it sound richer and sweeter to the ear. Banquets and feasts have always been very important in Persian society, and they still are today. One of the things Isfahan is famous for is its handicrafts and hand-printed textiles. Reza Sadiq Fard has been working in the bazaar for almost 70 years, making traditional tablecloths. He's one of the best in the business, it's painstaking work. In cartoon, how many hours did you do? Four hours. 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 Four آها چرا الان زاینده رود میبریم میشون این جای دیگه نمیشه آبی آبی پارسو اب ما سبون باشه باید آب روون باشه آب روون باشه که اینا هر چی از روش این شده به صدا چیز چی داره تمام بر کنارش اگر اومدیم تو آبی که روون نیست روش سی تمام اینا برمیگرده تو زمین خود پارس آها پین کار نکنن اینا شفا پیدا نمیکنه بله بدیم آقا با سما سفره رو بندازیم؟ بفرم خانم شریف ایراد نداره که با سفره رو بندازیم فقط کمک نیست بلکه میخوایم زودتر بخوریم بریم سو آقا ماسه؟ بریم بشخابیدن هم بیاریم ما کدوم بشخابه رو ببریم خانم؟ I've been invited by some family friends to their home for lunch to sample the delights of Isfahani cuisine Isfahanis think their cooking is the best in the whole of Iran We will see I'm really hungry, and I'm hoping that if I lend them a hand in the kitchen, they might let me try some of the food before lunch. Alan <laughs> 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 <laughs>
مشکلی نقش اساسی گیره در غذاهای اسفانی ویشه در از قلب دیگه میگیره دیگه این گرمای وجود رو میدیم داخله خانم شریف مردم اسفحان به خانم برشتی اصولا اهل قضا و اینا برشون مهمه در شدت این اهل بخور قضاهای خوش آقایون به خصوص خیلی شکم و تو اسفحان و اصلا جدی میگرم به شکمشون خیلی اهمیت میدن و خانومای اسفحانی باید خیلی خبره باشن تو این کار که این آقایون از نظر شکم راضی باشن خیلی اهل شکم شما دارین مال شکنجه میدید این قضا رو فقط میگین چی هست و اینقدر کار کردیم اینقدر درست شد مردای اسفان چون شمالی هم یه خورده شکم شکم